What's up everybody? We are back for another one and this one just like pretty much all of them but this one is super 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 important because literally about who you are as the food truck owner. Who are you as the number one? It trickles down a lot and today we're going to talk about 10 questions that you need to ask yourself to determine what type of leader, what type of boss, what type of whatever word you want to put there, what type of you are. It's critical to your business and the culture. So let's hop right into the 10 questions. Okay, so number one, I want you to, and, and I'm gonna ask a lot of questions, 10 to be exact, but there may be some questions inside of a question. I can't answer these questions as far as who you are and as far as you go. I want you to take these questions that I'm gonna ask and ask them to yourself. And you have to answer these questions honestly because is your business, is your food truck, and you, it's just, there's no reason to lie to yourself, okay? Now, there's no good, right, or wrong here. It's just a, to find an understanding of who you are and what you're gonna look like as a leader because if this is your business, it's your business, okay? So number one, have you ever taken what's called a DISC assessment, D-I-S-C assessment? Well, what that is is it's a questionnaire. Once again, there's no right or wrong answers. It basically just tells you what type of personality you have, and that's the first question. What kind of personality type are you? Would you consider yourself a good communicator? Effective communication is essential for a positive work environment. I mean, it literally can tilt the, the culture either way. Good, bad, either way. Communication is essential. Is, is essential. Would you consider yourself a good communicator? Would you consider yourself someone who can clearly convey what the expectations are of your business are you a good communicator as far as providing feedback to people and this could be just in life not necessarily even in business like are you can you constructively provide feedback for dot 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 do you foster open dialogue from whoever especially your employees are you open to that are you open to them possibly saying something that you might not like? What type of personality are? If you haven't ever taken a DISC assessment, I would advise you to. I would strongly advise you to because a lot of people try to manipulate the tests, people who do take them, but there's no there's no right or wrong answer. So you can't manipulate it. All it's doing is giving you all it's doing is giving you what your personality type is back based off of the analytical questions that it asks you. I would strongly advise you to go take a DISC assessment just so you can see what it says if you haven't ever taken one. And if you have, take another one. Number two, have you ever been in a leadership a leadership position before? You don't necessarily have to have leadership experience, but of course it helps. You've seen, you've been in the live bullets before. You've seen different things come up and how did you handle those? And they're coming from all different angles. Like, how do you handle that? Have you ever done that before? Once again, if you haven't, it's not a deal breaker, but if you have, it's a bonus because when you're running the kitchen, it's super fast paced and there's a lot of different things going on at the same time. So how do you, if you've been in a leader, leadership position before, how did you handle those sort of things? If you haven't, how will you handle those sort of things? Is there someone you can go to to talk to about it who can tell you their experience in that sort of position? Number three, and this bounces back to communication, but can you provide clear direction for what you want to see happen? Every single day working, and then especially in a lot of restaurants, when you're getting ready to start your shift, if you've ever served before or had some sort of kitchen position, you know, usually before the shift starts, there's some sort of huddle or some, some sort of um, group meeting that may last only five minutes or even maybe less than that. But there's some sort of huddle that is providing information on the direction of where the manager or your group, where you want that shift to go, how you want that shift to think, how you want that shift to move, how you want everybody to work together. Like you go over this stuff every day. Can you provide clear direction to the people who are under you who need direction? They, they want you to tell them what the direction of the day is so they can then go and do that and they have their role so they can then go play their role. Can you provide clear direction? And I know the quick, easy answer is, oh, yes, yes, I can do that. Yes, yes, I can do that. But I really, really, really want you to dig deep and think alone. Like, think about this. Think about your past conversations you've had with people. Do they tell you that they're confused based on what you told them? Or is it a slam dunk? Like, yes, I know I can provide clear direction and I, I communicate clearly. Like, really think this. Really, really consider this. Number four, are you a teacher or are you an order giver? I think that emotionally, we all can agree that people who teach 
get better responses from people than people who just give orders and that's it with no context with even with context like just order givers it wears on you over time it wears thin cultures tend to shift the wrong direction from order givers but people who teach number one they lead by example they show that hey i'll do this i know i'm asking you to do it but i'm willing to do it too we can do it together teachers build people up order givers over time and maybe even immediately tear people down so really think like which one are you are you a teacher or are you an order giver are you something in between can you shift yourself more on that side of let me help you versus telling you what to do it's a big deal especially as cultures are developed cultures are maintained it's that's really a big question to ask yourself number five this is kind of a it's a question but it's a little bit of a different question so in your working career have you ever worked in a toxic culture or a toxic environment. Now in that toxic culture, and you go back and you think about it, uh, God forbid you're in that right now as we speak, but when you think back on it, what would you have changed or done different if you were the person who could make a sweeping change? Like, What would you do? And as far as your food truck goes, what are you going to do to avoid putting someone else in that sort of a cult, in that sort of culture? How can you avoid that as just completely avoid that? Number six, can you handle conflict effectively? So as much as we don't want that to happen, as much as we can do everything in our power to keep everybody happy, smiling, working together, holding hands and everything, we know that eventually at some point, especially in the kitchen, when it's hot, there's a lot going on, certain moments can be highly stressful. Can you handle conflict effectively? And effectively, I mean, can you handle it with empathy? Can you handle it objectively? Can you handle it with some sort of resolution in mind? In the moment, maybe you haven't been in putting that type of, of uh, position before, maybe in a kitchen or anywhere else. But I'm sure you've had at some point in your life some sort of issue where you've had to handle some sort of conflict or you've seen some people having some sort of issue and it had to be addressed. Like, can you handle conflict effectively? And if you can't or you don't know, what can you do? What kind of book can you buy? What kind of course can you take? What kind of something can you take to help you kind of get ahead of that for when that moment arises? Number seven. Are you willing to adapt and learn? So, or are you the type who are, you know, you know what you know, you know it works, you, you know, you're setting your ways and that's that. Is really, is this is really a black or white question here, especially with technology constantly evolving. Are you willing to adapt and learn or are you just going to run it the way you know how to run it? I personally would advise you to be highly adaptive, to listen to new information. You don't have to take it all and put it all into your business, but I would highly advise you to constantly look at the technologies changing. There's a lot of AI moving into different things now that weren't there before. Like I said, you don't have to take everything because everything can be a lot. So you, even if you slowly integrate new things, it's still better than being a dinosaur who is behind. Like some some people still think food trucks don't take credit cards and some of them don't. Some of them are still just cash. I personally can't remember the last time I had cash in my pocket. So once again, are you open to adapt to new things or are you still are you just going to stay with what you know? Number eight, are you financially responsible and capable enough of managing the company's budget, managing payroll, managing all the, f the financial aspects that it takes to run a food truck? Can you do that? Are you responsible enough to keep that money in the business, to keep investing in the business, to reach your goal? Some people want to start with the truck and build it out to franchises and turn into a whole conglomerate. Some people just want to have a few trucks on the road and maybe turn those into restaurants. Some people just want maybe just want to have one truck and hit the road and and live their dreams. You know, everybody's different. There's no right or wrong answer to that. But the question still remains, are you financially responsible enough to maintain your business the way it's supposed to be maintained? If not, are you open to bringing someone in, bring them in to manage the money? You work it, but you know that the, man the money is being managed the correct way just by someone else for the sake of the business. Are you financially responsible enough to run your company or do you need help? And are you open to asking for help? Number nine, are you committed to promoting a healthy work-life balance among your team members? Now, this may not apply to you as a business owner because, you know, there may be, there will be some long days and long nights. But as far as your employees go, are you willing to understand that they didn't necessarily sign up to run your business the same way that you plan to run your business? So are you open to promoting a healthy work-life balance with your employees? It's not going to be easy and you're going to need them, but for the longevity of your business, 
for the low turnover numbers, you should probably really take a hard look at this because you want to keep people healthy. You want to keep people happy when they're healthy and they're happy. They continue to come to work when they're not. Now you got to go hire people. And we all know that that's not easy, especially if you have to do it over and over and over again. So if you haven't thought about this yet, think about it. What are you going to do to promote a healthy work life balance for the people who are helping you build your business? And finally, number 10. Do you have any strategies in your mind or in place to recognize and reward your employees and achievements? How are you going to keep them motivated? It's hot out there. Some days, depending on how many bookings you have or where you're going, these days can be long. What do you have in place to reward or show some sort of recognition for your employees? This is um, this takes a lot of brainstorming for this because, you know, you don't want to just. You don't want to come across as just like you're just throwing something out there just to keep them happy. You want your employees to feel like you actually thought this out and you really mean it. Unique ideas, not just run of the mill, you know, standard stuff you see and you've seen for years, like unique ideas to give to your employees to make them feel valued. So, guys, these are just the 10 questions that I think will really get you really get the ball rolling on thinking this through. This is all about just creating a healthy environment, healthy work work culture, keeping your employees feeling valued, keeping you as less stressed as possible because once again, there's going to be some long days, there's going to be some hot days, there's going to be busy days, there's going to be slower days, there's going to be a whole lot of different things. And you as the number one, everybody's going to look to you when it really boils down to it, they're going to look to you for the answer and you have to have it. If you don't, if you're shaky, they'll notice that and you may have someone who starts to make decisions for you. Or you may have people get frustrated because they can't get their questions answered or the the day the shift is a complete wreck and it could have been avoided. You want to think these things out before or as as much as possible before you hit the road. There are going to be some things you have to work out unique to you in the moment. But the more you know, the more you have thought out, the easier those decisions will be in the moment and it'll all be smooth and everybody will be happy. So until the next video, I will see you guys and I thank you guys for watching and listening to this. I will see you guys on the next one.